Hi there, my name is Timmy, and I'm new to Monster Hunter. I'm really, really excited to get into this game, but I'm also, I, I'm really scared that I'm going to miss something important and someone's going to yell at me again. Does this sound like you? Be afraid no longer, citizen, with these, the 10 things you need to know while playing Monster Hunter World. You are sure to not miss anything important ever again. Not even your daughter's dance recital. Before we get started then, a couple of little things. First, plug in a controller. The mouse and keyboard controls may be passable, but the controller will no doubt be the ideal experience for this game. Check your settings. There is some nice customization options from controls to camera to even height in your head armor to make you look a little bit cooler. And finally, don't be afraid to fling poo at the monsters that you don't want around. Number one. Oh god, a large monster! That's really scary! The game told me that I could use an SOS flare to get other hunters to help! Maybe, maybe I should do that? Timmy, it is not too dangerous to go alone. The best way to experience this game is to not use that flare on your first kill of a monster. Your first time fighting a monster is an experience that you will never be able to replicate. The fun of learning how it moves and the best way to fight it is simply fantastic. This experience is only lessened by doing your first hunt of a monster with someone who knows how to fight it. So do your best to avoid other people until you've killed your target monster at least once. Number two. Yeah, yes, I just killed a Kulu Yaku for the first time. I wonder what its armor looks like. Oh man, that's awesome! I'm gonna farm him and make that! Timmy, 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 have I not taught you better than this? Just because you can farm a new armor set does not mean that you should farm a new armor set. Don't feel pressured to farm new armor sets while progressing through the story. Of course, do it if you like the look of it and you want to look better, but the skills won't matter until endgame, so just choose what you like the look of. Personally, I recommend the bone armor, which you can get the materials for straight out of bone piles, and from killing a couple of small monsters, and then the Odogaron armor in high rank. You'll know it when you see it. The exception to this is weapons. Upgrade your weapons whenever you can, because surprisingly, having a stronger weapon will make anything easier in the long haul. You will also, over time, gain a bunch of little armor spheres. Don't be afraid to use these. These early ones will have little effect on late game armor, so use them to upgrade your early gear and make it a little bit more comfortable. Number three. Oh, uh, hello there. Hello there. General Kenobi. Welcome to Astera. What, what do you do? Timmy, you buffoon. These three people put together are your resource center, and what a resource they are for you. This little trio of scientists will be unbelievably helpful to you throughout your journey in this game. Aside from things that the story goes out of its way to tell you, like the fact that using them you can unlock camps in various areas of the map that you can fast travel to, start quests at, and it's just going to save you an absolute ton of time. You will also gain access to the wonderful system of bounties and investigations. Investigations will be where you spend the bulk of your time once you finish the story, but will have minimal use before that. Investigations are things that you can pick up by random chance when you pick up a monster track or break off a part of a monster or even kill a monster, or even a small monster. They are sort of like side quests to kill a specific monster that will reward you with extra materials based on the amount of boxes and the color of the boxes themselves. Investigations are simply the most efficient way to farm specific monsters for parts for weapon upgrades or armor sets. Bounties are split into three sections, just like the resource center itself is split between three people. The first section, the registered bounties, will be some of your best friends. If you manage them correctly, registered bounties are little background quests that you can select from a list of available options. You can complete all of these during a regular hunt, with some happening to overlap with your main objectives and some just being things that you can do along the way. These will give you research points, which are an invaluable currency in this game for various purposes, most of which will help you later on, but if you can still be useful now, such as crafting palico armor or fertilizing your crops at the Botanical Research Center. These bounties are also going to be your main source of armor spheres, which you can and should use to upgrade your early game armor as much as possible. Critical bounties cover the deliveries at the Resource Center requests from you, most of them ending with you getting a camp. Limited bounties are a bit of a special thing that you will, for the most part, be unable to complete until later in the game. The limited bounty system is, generally speaking, a weekly resetting group of quests, with the exception being during holiday events where they reset daily. There are four limited bounties at a time. They will vary slightly, but for the most part will ask you to either hunt, meaning kill or capture, a specific monster, a specific type of monster, such as a fanged wyvern or a bird wyvern, complete a specific type of quest, such as an investigation or an event quest, or complete a number of quests in a specific area, such as the ancient forest or the wildspire wastes. The first three of these limited bounties will always be from that pool, with the difficulty of the bounty usually increasing the further you go down the list. The final bounty will be the main prize and you will complete this by simply completing all of the other three.
Outside of the holiday events, the final bounty, always labeled as the General Limited Bounty, will reward you with a number of research points, an item worth some zenny, and a ticket that you can trade in for some rare late game monster materials. You want to start collecting those as soon as you can. Number four. Wait, what? why is the monster just squirming around right now? Good job, Timmy. You inadvertently access the next tip. The environment around you is a living, breathing entity that you can use to your advantage. The world is your oyster, but the Monster Hunter world is your weapon. Between things like these trees that you can lure monsters into knocking over to create vine traps, which will keep them tied up for a short amount of time, all the way to things like this boulder that you can make fall on a monster's head to do some damage and knock them over. There are tons of ways that you can interact with what is around you. A big thing to be aware of that is a slight bit more subtle is the areas that you can jump off of and slide down. Jumping and sliding may be a great mobility tool, but it's not just used for that. For many weapons, your jumping and sliding attacks will do quite a hefty amount of damage, and for some weapons, doing these as much as possible may even be your best source of damage. But on top of that, these are how most weapons will achieve a mount. Mounting a monster is a process that will ultimately either end with you running out of stamina and failing if you're bad at the game, or overcoming the monster and toppling it to the ground for a few seconds of free damage. So it's definitely worth trying to do. B -b 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 bonus tip! When mounting a monster, the game tells you to press R2 to brace when the monster is trying to knock you off. Well, this is one way of dealing with it, the secondary and arguably more efficient way is to use your left stick to move to another spot on the monster. This will use a comparable amount of stamina to what bracing would, but will allow you to keep actively stabbing the monster rather than having to wait for their counterattack to finish. A part of the environment near and dear to my heart is wedge beetles. These beautiful little creatures have a symbiotic relationship with the hunter. They will feed off whatever little bits of something that you have attached to your grappling hook while well, they also allow you to attach to them and use them to swing from. These are both excellent for mobility in certain areas and can let you do a jumping attack in areas that you may otherwise be unable to do so. Be wary of the greatest enemies you have in this game. Toads. But also be aware that you can use them to your advantage. Paratoads are the earliest example of this that you'll find, but things like sleep toads also exist and are awesome ways to apply a status to a monster for free. But if you aren't careful, you will also apply a status to yourself for free. Not knowing about the toads can hurt you, but preparing for them can be a great boon. Number five. Oh man, I ran out of mega potions, but I'm still fighting the monster. Oh well. I guess I'll die. Timmy, why do you never think of the future? There are so many ways to prepare ahead of time so that you never wind up in this situation. The first part of this and the way that it will keep you running through most of the game is to just gather everything you pass. You'd be amazed at the amount of materials you collect by just picking up everything between you and your target, and then spending the extra time at the end of quest finding even more things to pick up, instead of just standing there picking your nose for the 40 seconds after you carve your quarry. Secondarily, you can unlock the Botanical Research Center, which is an absolutely fantastic tool. You simply tell this very nice elf man what items you would like to have more of. For example, honey, if you simply wish to craft mega potions. And then you will start to collect a small amount of honey after every quest you complete. If you apply the correct fertilizer to the honey, then the amount of honey you receive per quest will increase. Some optional quests will also show up at specific points in the story that let you expand the amount of cultivation slots, the amount of slots within the box itself, and the types of fertilizer that you can use. When some people started the game... <coughs> me. <coughs> they didn't pay attention and didn't realize that this method existed. These people may or may not have spent multiple hours walking around the map just farming honey so that they wouldn't run out of mega potions when they played the game. Don't be like me. Be better. Use the Botanical Research Center. On top of this, one way to stay on top of yourself and be ready for every hunt is to eat a meal before you go out. You can either do this at the chef's table where the Meowskiller chef works in the gathering hub up top or at the camp after you've departed on the quest. Early food will give you a slight increase to your max health and max stamina and will increase one of your stats by a small amount. But late game food will give you a massive maximum health and maximum stamina boost as well as a large statistical bonus. All food also has a chance of activating feline food skills, but those are a little more advanced than the purposes of this guide. Just know that eating food before every hunt will do nothing but help you out. The other thing to stay on top of for this is your inventory itself. Having all of the right items somewhere is all well and good, but if you're just keeping them in your item box rather than bringing them with you in your pouch, then you might as well not have them at all. You can restock from your box at multiple points within Astera or from the tent within your camp if you are already on the hunt. Number six. 
Oh man, the bow looks really cool. I'm never going to use another weapon again. But uh, the, the greatsword's also cool. But no, oh, the dual blades, those look really awesome. Whoa there, Timmy, slow down. There is no hidden rule that says you can only play one weapon. When you start your first hunt, you are bound to make the same super important decision that every hunter makes. Similar to choosing your starter Pokemon in any of those different types of monster hunting games, except for the fact that it's less set in stone. It is equally as likely that you will fall in love with your first weapon as it is that you will grow to hate it. Every weapon in this game has a unique style, and every one is fun in its own way, even the hunting horn. No matter what stigmas people throw around. <laughs> Not only is every weapon fun, but every weapon is capable of killing every monster with similar effectiveness, even if some are better for group hunting than they are for hunting by yourself. To that point, leave yourself room. Don't block yourself off. B -b 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 bonus tip! If you have a weapon capable of blocking, do not be afraid to do so. Dodging attacks is a super important skill to gain and is the ultimate way to avoid damage in this game if you master the timing. However, if you have a weapon capable of blocking, such as the greatsword, sword and shield, lance, gun lance, charge blade, or even the heavy bowgun, then you should not be afraid to take advantage of this over rolling. It is a part of the weapon designed to make it more versatile while fighting and designed to help you stay alive. Try a new weapon if you want to. You may think that you love the charge blade, but if you never give the switch axe a chance, you may miss out on your soulmate. Number seven. This monster's taking no damage. How on earth am I supposed to kill it? Timmy, stop. Look at your screen. The game is giving you advice and you are ignoring it. When you hit a monster and the number that pops up is gray, it means that you're hitting it in a suboptimal location. If the number that pops up is orange, it means you're hitting it in one of its weaker spots. No failure in this game is a complete failure. If you cart to a monster, even just get hit by them, you should take the opportunity to learn from it. If you learn the way that a monster moves, you will learn how you yourself should move in order to avoid it. A seasoned hunter knows exactly where it's safe to stand during a monster's attacks and can use this to do more damage and take care of the hunt even faster. Once you have gathered enough information about a monster, either by gathering tracks for it or by killing it, you will unlock its entry in the Monster Field Guide. This will be your best friend for learning how to best tackle your enemy. The most basic research level will show you where an enemy is weak and what type of damage it is weak to in that area. The sword picture being slicing damage, the hammer picture being blunt damage, and the little bullet being range damage. You can also see what parts are breakable for extra rewards, the elemental weaknesses of a monster, which are really good to know if you're using an elemental weapon, and the status weaknesses of a monster, which are really good to know if you're using a status weapon. Number eight. Oh god, this, there's so many skills to choose from. I need to gather all the ones that boost my damage if I want to get big numbers popping up on my screen. Hold it right there, Timmy. Sure, you can focus on damage if you want, but you will be missing out on a lot of what this game has to offer. Knowing yourself means knowing what you will enjoy. If what will give you the most enjoyment out of this game is to have the most offensively powerful build, then sure, go out there and make your build full of weakness exploit and crit boost and attack boost, but I don't want to hear you complaining that every build for every weapon feels the same, because the only reason that it feels that way is the way that you're playing the game. There is no correct way to play Monster Hunter, and there is no correct way to have a build, other than the way that you enjoy. The best build you can use is the one that gets you through a hunt in one piece and you had fun using. Past that, it doesn't really matter. Evade Extender is an awesome skill. You can float around the battlefield like nobody's business. Guard Up is awesome, as it lets you block some of the most powerful attacks in the game, which is something that I'd love to show you, but due to the spoiler-free nature of this video, you will not see it. Your Sleep Greatsword set that is focused around getting a couple of massive hits per hunt is really cool. It may not be the most damage you can do, but it's fun, right? And my answer to the hottest debate in all of Monster Hunter is this. Earplugs are an okay skill to use. Sure, you can dodge roars, but you don't have to. At the end of the day, you should do whatever makes you enjoy this game the most, especially if that includes wearing the Wiggler helmet. Fuck yeah, Wigglers. Number nine. Oh, I've got to go fast. I really want to reach the end of the game as soon as possible. If I don't win this race, how will I ever consider myself a true hunter? Timmy, how many times do I have to tell you that there is no race here? You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> yes! Oh, it would appear that it is too late for that. Stop. Relax for a moment. 
Let the true beauty of this world around you sink in. The amount of detail and love put into this environment and into this game as a whole is truly breathtaking. This game can give you hundreds of hours of enjoyment. Personally, I'm just under 800 hours, if you just let it do what it does best. This game feels alive, but only if you let it live. Every moment of your time in this game does not need to be spent hunting. You can chill out and do some sightseeing, go on a date with your palico because you're sort of weird and into that kind of thing, find the coolest looking outfit you can make, or even hunt down some rare endemic life. There is so much in this game that you will never see if you don't specifically look out for it, but all of these things are what make the game feel truly complete. What makes it tick and what makes it last. Number 10. Near the end of the story, you will be given a free attack jewel. For the love of God, do not lose it. Do not meld it. Do not throw it away. Do nothing that could endanger its life. It is extremely valuable. I've been Cotton Dinosaur. These have been the 10 things that you need to know while playing Monster Hunter World. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the little notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.